Hola, Che Familia. Hope everyone is safe and healthy in their homes tonight. Welcome back to the Latinx Factor Sharpen Your Professional Edge program. This is Dr. Dora Renault here at SHIP, and what a treat we have for you tonight. This month, we are celebrating women in engineering for Women's History Month. For our special guest tonight, we invited our very own Star Award winner and SHIP Lifetime member, and also a committee advisor to our Shatina conference, the one and only Diana Ortega. We're going to hear her inspiring story and get some actionable career advice. We'll talk about overcoming obstacles, how to pave new pathways, and finding creative strategies to confidently persist in an engineering career. So Diana is the Quality Launch Manager at General Motors, and the 2019 recipient of SHIP's Jaime Oaxaca Award. So Diana, welcome. How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you, Dora? Hello, SHIP Familia. I'm doing great. So let's get Well, started. I am. Yes, yes. Well, first of all, I want to thank everyone for taking time out of your schedule this evening to listen to my story, my journey, and I could not be more proud of this team, uh, the SHIP Familia, that has really um, provided me the opportunity to be the leader that I am today. So, so with that, uh, we'll get started. So today's, today's session is gonna be about the climb. So I have a 22 year career, as crazy as that sounds, with General Motors as an automotive engineer. And really I wanna to talk to you about some of the challenges and the opportunities and all of the successes that have happened throughout my career in a condensed form um, and really talk about that journey and about the climb and what it takes to get us to from point A to point B. And I think it really aligns to the idea of this year's theme of the SHIP National Conference, which is ascend to transcend, right? And what we need to do in order to get us to that next level or even in the space that we are in today. So with that, uh, we're here to celebrate also Women's History Month. So what an amazing month. And I'm just gonna kind of give you a little bit of additional um, feedback about myself. So March, I just had a birthday uh, on Sunday. So March has always been really cool um, to talk about women in history and all of the things that we have, as a nation have progressed specifically in the area of STEM. Um, so I just wanted to share a couple of, of uh, statistics here in case you didn't know. Um, nationally, we have been celebrating Women History Month only since 1981, which is really not that long ago when you kind of put years into perspective. And uh, beginning in 1987, in, in 1981, it was only a week. So we only celebrated for one week. And then in 1987, it was declared that we were going to observe the whole month as Women History Month. So just wanted to share a little bit of statistics there. Of course, an engineer. <laughs> not you know how could I not add that right so this slide is really um, about strong women and what we need in order to succeed so you know I kind of want to put this photo out there to kind of plant the seed as I start talking about my journey and some of the things that helped me along that climb so really this is to kind of plant the seed, think about what this specific slide to, to you means to you. Is there a certain emotion that you feel when you see this? Is there something that, somebody that you think about? Um, so for example, for me, this specific um, photo just reminds me of all of those trailblazers that were there before me, right? Kind of opening that path up to women in STEM, um, because as you know, there's not a lot of women in STEM today. We only make up, I believe it is 3%, Dora, correct me if I'm wrong, but 
very low number um, of number of females within the STEM field. So this is just a representation to me of how folks behind me really have pushed me along the way. Um, and not only women, you know, I, I do want to give a shout out to all the men um, that are listening today as well. Uh, there's a lot of men that have really helped me along the way too. So, so that's, this is my, this is my token of appreciation. This is my, hey, thank you for everything that you've done for me to push me along the way. So that's kind of the thought that this, this brings to, you know, to mind for me. So um, my first title, of course, is mom. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about you know, who, who Diana Ortega is and um, my, my role as an engineer and my role as an advocate for change here in the Latino community in the Metro Detroit area. And um, I would say across the nation as well. So, so I am a mother um, and this is my family here. So you'll see Ruben, who um, is my son, who's 11 and Ivana Odilia, that is um, a senior in high school and my husband Ruben. Um, it was funny on, on my birthday, which was on Sunday, and as we know, the world that we're living in today, um, we did not go anywhere for my birthday, but we had a beautiful dinner here in our home, and I dressed up, and my, my son, he says, Mom, why are you so dressed up? It looks like you're going to a wedding. <laughs> so, you know, I just, um, <laughs> it was really funny. He's always keeping me on my toes, and of course, of course, they both are, but you know, he was just so witty and really made my day. So uh, this is this is the the reason for my being a, a, a mom, Ivana and Ruben. And the, over here on the right, you'll see um, how proud I am of a native Detroiter. So born and raised in the Metro Detroit area. My dad is a retired Detroit police officer, and my mom is a also retired um, automotive. Uh, line workers. So, you know, I definitely have that automotive uh, background in, in my in my in my blood. Right. And um, U of D Mercy grad with mechanical engineering degree and U of M. So go Titans, go Wolverines. All right. So in high school, I decided to become an engineer um, because I wanted a challenge. Right. And I saw that the reason why, um, you know, I always, always interested in how things worked and how, you know, math and science uh, worked in terms of um, building things, right? So that's really why I, I became an engineer. So in 10th grade, that's when I decided um, to, to pursue um, a mechanical engineering degree. So of course, there's my little gear. Um, representing why I wanted to become an engineer. And then uh, in the, at the university level, that's where I became involved with SHIP. So as crazy as this sounds, I've been involved uh, with SHIP for a number of decades. <laughs> so yes, I know I'm only 26, but um, <laughs> definitely uh, that's where I got engaged with SHIP. And I was one of the first founding mem members at the University of Detroit Mercy. Uh, within SHIP. So that's that's how I got involved. And then and I started my career as an engineer at an assembly plant that is no longer in existence. Um, but uh, this is Pontiac East Assembly that was uh, right in the city of Pontiac. And I started um, as a dimensional engineer a number of years ago in 1997. And then I also had the opportunity to work abroad in Mexico. So uh, during that time, as um, an assembly engineer in Mexico, that's when I had the opportunity to not only use my technical skills, but I also use my bilingual skills. Um, I didn't mention pre in my, my previous slide, but my parents, my father's from Texas, um, from a little city outside of Corpus Christi, and my mom is a native from, from uh, Monterrey, Mexico. So I always had... Um, to me, the best of both worlds, right? The opportunity to work um, in Mexico was really um, a culmination of, okay, I have the technical skills and I also have the uh, bilingual skills to work as an engineer. So um, definitely some great opportunity there in Mexico in our plant in, in Salau. 
which is right in the center of the state. If anybody's ever visited that area, it's right in, in the center of Guanajuato. And um, this slide, I just wanted to share some status in terms of where I'm at right now with General Motors. So as Dora mentioned, I am a quality launch manager. And you may ask, okay, what does a launch manager do? Um, and basically I work on future programs that are currently um, not in production. So I work at a manufacturing assembly plant where we build the Cadillac, I'm sorry, the Chevrolet Traverse and the Buick Enclave. Um, so that program that I'm on it will be a future program for 21. So honestly, I have the opportunity to work with, uh, with, with the product from bumper to bumper and product that nobody's ever seen before. So it's really exciting to have that insight and provide feedback on you know, what things may need to change with our products or what the customer is really looking for. And um, I really wanted to also share with you some of the vision that General Motors, um, what, what we see in, in terms of the future. And the future at GM is all about we see a we see a commitment within our within our footprint in the future world with zero crash, crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion. And you may say to yourself, "Wow, how how is that even possible?" Right? And honestly, that is our vision. And Mary Barra, uh, which is the first female CEO of a manufacturing company, she is really really doing a great job in, in terms of driving that. Uh, commitment at GM. Um, and really, as you see in the bottom corner here, it really talks about how how do we how do we make that happen, right? And the only way that we can make it happen is through the people at, at General Motors. So I'm really fortunate to have a wonderful trajectory so far uh, within GM. And um, these are some of our name brands, just to kind of give you a little plug in, um, Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, and Cadillac. Okay, so I, I will share, I'm gonna pause for a moment here. I will share that we will have the opportunity to take questions. So if you would like to provide questions, please make sure um, to send those in to Dora. And uh, we will probably closer to the end of my presentation, I'll have the opportunity to answer some of those questions that you may have for me. Okay, Let's see. All right, so I thought it would be fun to share this photo. Um, so this photo was the cover in 1998. Oh my gosh, I can't even believe I'm saying that right now. Um, <laughs> but I was on the cover of Minority Engineer. So that first photo that I showed you of that Pontiac East assembly plant, uh, this photo was taken actually taken in, inside of the four walls of that assembly plant, um, and I was working um, I don't know an expansion of some sort um, at the plant. So I have my blueprints there, and you know I have my little um, pocket protector or whatever I had in my pocket there with my notes um, and my hard hat. I mean even my hard hat has my my maiden name on it. So uh, definitely a while ago, but. Um, again, the reason I, I kind of added this photo was to, to really make it like thought provoking in terms of, okay, what would I tell? So what would I tell Diana Ortega, you know, back in 98 about, you know, the world in terms of my career and life and, you know, the, the area of STEM within a male dominated industry, right? And I would tell you the one thing that always sticks in my mind, and I know they say no regrets, you know, and you know, everything happens for a reason. But the one thing that I would definitely tell my person, my, you know, myself at that time is that it's not always about just working hard, right? Um, and as Latinos, you know, as minorities, I feel that sometimes we think that that is always the case, right? We work 100%, 200%, 300%, and we don't take advantage or we don't highlight, right, what we've done. Um, so that is definitely something that I would tell some 
some of the younger students, younger engineers, you know, or, or even some of the some of the professionals that that are out there and you know are are, are kind of feeling like you know, maybe you're not, you're not hitting the mark, or I, I don't know what the specific situation is. It's not always about just working hard. Yes, absolutely, you have to work hard, but there's just so much more, right? So I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in depth, uh, but I think you kind of get the, the notion here of, of how important it is not only to work hard. Okay. So if you remember, I talked about um, the climb, the journey. Oops. So what do you need? What do you need to go on a climb? What do you need for that journey? That journey that we're all, um, whether you're, you know, a senior at the university or you're an entry level engineer with two years of experience, or you're an engineer with, with 10 years of, of experience. What do you need for that climb? So number one, you have to be safe, right? You have to have your gear in order to, to go on this journey. You need strength, right? So if your body is weak or you don't have you know, enough um, energy, there may be um, a reason that you're not gonna succeed. And most importantly, right, is that you need not go alone. So on this climb, you're climbing this mountain, um what are what are some of the things that you need when you're going on this journey so kind of before i go to that next slide kind of think about what you need right in terms of um to be safe and your strength and who you're going to take on your journey right so you got to be very strategic on who those specific people are so in terms of safety right what what, what makes you or what kind of um, allows you to be safe? What is your safety net? And the reason I ask this question is that I go back to the slide where I had that photo about working hard, working hard, working hard. So I would say on a personal level, the first seven years of my career, you know, and I could, I could quantify it, right? I mean, I can sit here and really think about this 22 year journey, I would say that those seven years, those first seven years of my career, I was too safe, right? I, 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 I had these dreams and I had these ideas, but I didn't necessarily act upon them, right? So um, as I think about, you know, Diana Ortega working hard at those assembly plants or even in Mexico on that um, international assignment, I really did not want to move out of my comfort zone, right? So that's why I talk about this safety net. Um, I knew where I wanted to go, but I really didn't know how to get there because I myself, I think was my own, uh, I don't want to say enemy, but I was my own, the, the person that was blocking myself uh, was myself. Right. I, I, I couldn't see past some of these um, challenges or I couldn't see past just being comfortable. Right. Moving along, working hard, getting some average. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, reviews and um, not really going out of that comfort zone. So, again, I go I, I go back to making sure that you put yourself out there front and center, right? And not only think about working hard, but it's about networking. It's about what other things you can do to highlight your capability, right? Within that role that you're in. So kind of think about those things as I ask this question. So, what percentage of the career choices that you make today include risk? So are you a risky person? Do you feel that you're just comfortable? So this, this Dora, is where we'll ask the audience for some responses. Okay, so launching okay. the poll. We're launching the poll.
we have 40%, 50% that have participated. We are now up to 70%. Still going. Slowing down a little bit at 80%. So we will go ahead and close the polls. We'll share it. So we have, let's see, 48% selected 20, between 25 and 50%. And then 37% selected zero to 25%. Okay, so one more time, 37% zero selected to zero 25. To 25. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then 48% of the audience selected 25 to 50%. And then 15% of the audience selected greater than 50. Excellent. Great stats. So um, I would say my younger self would have been in that zero to 25. Right? <laughs> I would have been right in that 37 percent, um, which is, you know, which is right below the 50 percent mark. Um, but I, I will say I'm very glad to see this number, the 25 to 50 percent. So one thing to keep in mind, right, is that it's very important to have transferable skills, right? Transferable skills that will get you from, say, one job to the next job. Um, and then risk might be defined in different manners for um, some of the people that have taken the poll. So you may think of risk as taking on a different role. However, risk may also mean um, taking on more assignments within your specific role or also risk may be seen upon as um, challenging the status quo or challenging processes within your own organizations and companies. So um, again, it all depends on how we define risk. Um, so very good. I'm, I'm glad to see that um, folks are risk takers and, and are taking that plunge. Um, and there are definitely a lot more resources available in terms of um, looking at what opportunities are are available, I think I think I think nowadays, you know, in terms of career development or career opportunity, um, I, I don't know the specific statistics, but I would I would bet to say that there are folks that stay within specific roles um, less a less amount of time. Dora, what do you think about that? I think there are folks that, yeah, yeah, okay. All right, thank you. Thank you everyone for, for sharing that with, with us here in the audience. Okay. So we're talking about that climb, right? We're talking about my journey, um, what, what I did, for example, those first seven years, you know, Diana stayed, Diana stayed, on her her little island and really didn't you know I didn't really um, venture out too much and um, what what are what are some of the strengths that I use today right so along that journey um, there's things that maybe I there were muscles for example that at that time as a younger engineer I really didn't I really didn't know how to use. Um, and um, today I do, right? So, you know, you learn through the different experiences along that journey, along your career. So on the left-hand corner, um, there's, there's different, um, uh, these are self-reflection, self, self right? Time for self-reflection, time to think about um, your, current, your current career, or, you know, not, not necessarily just career. I know we've talked a lot about career, but just um, self-reflection upon your life, right? Um, this bottom left-hand um, corner of photo here, um, I, I love, I love being with people, right? People energize me. Um, you know, right now, I, I will say it's, it's difficult 
that um, I'm working from home, like many of us are, like all of us really are. And um, it's hard not to engage with my team at work. So um, that's really one of my strengths. Over here in the right hand corner, I love to read. I absolutely love to read. So um, self development is something uh, that's very important to me. Um, and I'll be sharing a couple of a couple of, of tips there with what I do in terms of self development. And then last but not least, I should have covered the ship logo because ship is my familia. Um, but down here, these the circle of different different hands. To me, this represents all of the work that I do within my com community, right? With with SHIP and other organizations and how important it is to give back. Um, it, it is, I think it is absolutely important to provide to others what has been provided to you. So, you know, take a moment to kind of reflect on that and, and think if there's, if there's something that you can do extra today, tomorrow, or in the future um, with, our, with our community, um, make sure to, to get engaged. So, so this is what gives me strength. Let's see. So I'm gonna ask the audience now, we're gonna ask another poll question. And the question is, which of the identified strengths that I just talked about do you lean on the most? Is there one that, that you lean on the most? So are we ready to open the poll? The polls are open. We have 25%. We're at 60%. 70%, 80%, slowing down a little bit. So we'll go ahead and close the polls. Wow, okay. So we have 50% that have selected self-development, 16% selected community service, 27% selected working in a team and 7%, only 7% selected time for reflection. Okay. Excellent. So um, let's start with the top. So 50% self-development. So I'm going to I'm going to talk to the self the 50% for a moment uh, and self-development, not to say that the others are not um, doing the same, but I think it's very important to always be abreast of what's going on. Right. Um, and again, I'll talk a little bit about that on one of my future slides, but considering the current situation and how things are so dynamic um, within corporate America or whether you're working for a smaller company, I think development is key um, in terms of how can you make yourself today more um, um, available, right? Or how can you make yourself more um, appealing to some of the companies that are looking for um, engineers or looking for folks in the STEM field. I don't want to forget about the scientists or the, you know, math uh, majors or anyone that's out there that might not be an engineer. So um, my apologies of just talking engineering, but that's kind of my frame here, or my um, mindset. But yeah, I think it's really important to, to spend time doing that. So carve some time out of your busy schedules. Um, to really talk about or to work on self-development. Um, the next one was 27%. Is that working on, do I refresh my memory, 27%? Working in a team. Working in a team. Working in a team. Aha. Working in a team. So, yes, we all work in a team. However, how many have been on an interview, right? A situational behavioral interview, and they ask, tell me about a time when you were involved 
involved in a challenging situation and how did you handle that, right? And they want they want you to talk about you. They want to talk they want you to talk specifically about what you did to conquer that challenge. But I feel us as Latinos, we always talk about the team, you know, and, and it's not it's not that we don't care about the team or um, it, it's very important to always highlight what you did. Um, and this was really hard for me. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if I was just too empathetic to the rest of the team. You know, I, I just it really it, it took a lot of coaching um, to really start thinking about, OK, wait a minute. What what did I do and what did I contribute? Um, so something definitely to keep in mind um, as we're talking about working on a team, working in a team. Um, 16 percent, 16 percent, I believe, community service. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. So 16 percent, uh, definitely um, really, really important to give back. Um, again, those opportunities, whether whatever, whatever you can do to help support um, all of the communities and nonprofits or, you know, whatever you feel is the need in your area or in your community, definitely important to give back. And then 7% on self-reflection. So um, I actually, in my schedule, once a month, usually on Fridays, I carve out somewhere between two and four hours out of my schedule and really take time and and, and this is this is very serious i take time from a mental break perspective right i mean i just i just need that time i work in a i, I didn't i don't know if i talked a little bit about um you know working in a manufacturing plant and it's it's high demand you know, we build over 500 vehicles a day within a nine hour shift. Um, no, I'm not always tied specifically to the production line, but it, it's high paced, you know, high stress environment. So I make sure that once a month, again, on Fridays, two to, two to four hours um, to kind of take that time to take a mental break, really. And and think about you know how my week has gone, how my month has gone, um, inside of work and outside of work, right? With my family and everything that we have going on. Um, and I'll be honest with you, it is so so nice. And sometimes I just sit there on the couch. I'll be honest. Sometimes I just sit there and and I do nothing for those two hours. But that was my time. Yeah. Of course, I'm on my phone and maybe talking to a girlfriend or, you know, a stretching or doing something specific, but that's my time, right? And I, I think it's very important that we as individuals take that time um, for that self-reflection. Um, I mentioned earlier um, to Dora as I was prepping, I just started back up, no kidding, this journal had a entry of January 2019 is the last time that I touched a journal that I started, and it's a gratitude journal. Um, so I started it back up today, and um, I, I really, I really enjoy um, some some of the things that I wrote today. And I'm just going to share one: um, dinner with the family, right? Having the opportunity through everything that our country is going through the opportunity for me to sit down three days in a row so far with my family at dinner has been amazing. Um, so, so I, again, I just, I just wanna stress the importance of self-reflection. And yeah, maybe you don't have time in your schedule for two to four hours, maybe it's half hour, you know? So um, again, I think it's really important to do that for yourself. Okay. All right. So um, on that journey, we talked about what we need, right? What are our strengths? The last item um, that I added was you need not go alone, right? So who's your tribe? Who do you who do you consider 
your tribe, um, I'm going to ask the audience, and maybe you can um, answer this in the next one in the next polling question. But do you have have you heard of the term um, your personal board of directors? So do you have within your um, within your circle of friends, do you have mentors? Do you mentor other folks? Do you have a spiritual guide, guidance, um, somebody that you go to and you talk about, you know, things that are on your mind? Do you have a mental coach? Um, and do you have that friend or do you have that colleague um, within your circle that you can ask those really hard questions, right? I mean, I've I've heard some I've heard some pretty, you know, um, tough things from some of the people that are around me, right? I've heard um, some focused feedback from specific people on how I need to modify, for example, a behavior or or, or modify, um, you know, I'll, I'll share a, just a quick little a quick little story here. Um, recently, not too long ago, I was told that I was too bold. And I'm like, what? How can I be too bold, right? Is that even possible? Um, but again, it all it all depends on the situation, the delivery, perhaps, maybe we're having a bad day, you know, maybe we snipped at, you know, we snapped at somebody. Um, so do you have that person within your circle, within your tribe, that you can ask those really hard questions? And can they be honest with you? So I've talked about my journey. I've talked about maybe some of the things that I've done within my career. Do you think that the skills you use in your current job set you up for your next role? Um, and, and this may not tie in directly to what I just talked about, but it will for the next for the next slide. So do you think the skills you use in your current job set you up for the next role? And um, let's open up the poll. Again, while we're waiting for the um, results, thank you everyone so far um, that has joined. I hope that the information has been um, informative and um, you're taking away some good nuggets of, of info. I'm sorry you can't see me. I was getting ready to, um, you know, say hello to everyone via the webcam, but <laughs> not today. All right, we're at 80 percent. And we'll close the poll. Go ahead and share it. So 72 percent said yes, 19 percent said unsure, and 9 percent said no. Okay, so 72 percent said yes. 19 unsure and 9% said no. Right. Okay, so the real question is, what does Diana say? <laughs> and I say, so I say no. Um, and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share, I'm gonna share a reason why. Um, Bef I, I guess before, before we talk about this book recommendation, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay on, on this slide. So honestly, um, the, the reason I say no um, is number one, you have a specific role, right? So say for example, um, I don't know, let's say you're a quality engineer. Um, you're a quality engineer within a certain role, but you just got promoted as a quality lead engineer. Right. So now you're actually leading a team of people um, and within that team and of, of people, you have five engineers that are working uh, for you. Do you think that as you 
have developed yourself within the engineering career that you've pursued, do you think that those five people, you will be able to have the same, um, uh, not, not thought process, but the same um, relationship with all five of those people? So you come into the you come into a meeting, you present yourself and you say, okay, I'm the new, I'm the new quality lead engineer, and this is the way it is. Do you do you think that you will be successful within that role? Absolutely not, right? So some of the skills and some of the some of the tools maybe that you used in your previous role that you thought were effective at that time are not necessarily going to be the same. Um, and that that scenario I just gave you happened to me um, and, and I was devastated, right? And, and um, w when that happened, um, I was getting all of this feedback um, about how I didn't know how to lead a team of, you know, five engineers. And it, it, was, it was hard, right, to take some of the feedback, but I learned quickly, right, that, maybe some of the skills and some of the tactics that I used previously were not going to work with these individuals. So not only do you have the technical, do you need to have the technical skills? You have to have the people skills, right? And if you're able to master both of them from a, um, from a managerial perspective, um, if you want to be that people person, right? If you want to be that people leader slash technical leader, uh, you want to make sure that you have the right tools in your toolbox to go to that next to that next step. Um, so I'm going to share with you a book um, that I found extremely helpful. Um, so Marshall Goldsmith, um, for those I don't know if anybody's heard of Marshall Goldsmith, but he is an executive coach. Um, and I got introduced to this book, oh, about five years ago. And you know, I, unfortunately, I, I couldn't find my copy because I, I wanted to go back and, and look at some of the things that I had highlighted. Um, but this really talks about um, how people become successful, right? And what the problems are with success. So just because you used a specific skill set in, in a specific role doesn't necessarily mean that it'll work for that next role. Um, and I've highlighted a couple of things um, here that that sort of summarize um, some of the major major um, highlights of the of the book. Um, number one, the problem with success. Right? Many times we feel okay, we're successful, we're successful, and then we stay stagnant, right? And we don't we don't go back um, to maybe understand how we be, became successful and how we can improve on that success that we've always that we've already achieved, right? Um, again, it goes back to the whole theme of my talk this evening. It's all about the climb. It's really all about the journey and what you're learning throughout that journey, right? It's a series of stepping stones. It's not necessarily about just arriving. Um, it's about that opportunity, those opportunities that you've had along the road. Um, and there's there's some awful habits, right? That we um, that we have, and you know we we have to master, um, and it's not easy. Um, so some of them are, for example, this one, not listening. Some of us, many of us, a majority of us, we're listening to respond and not listening to understand, right? Um, not expressing gratitude. This one is absolutely key. Um, make sure that at every opportunity that you have, you are expressing your gratitude um, to those that are helping you along your journey. Um, this one, uh, bragging how smart you are or what you know, or um, again, very important to um, keep this one in check, right? Kind of keep it in check and make sure that, um, that we're humble yet at the same time, um, we are we are demonstrating our capability, but not in a manner that you know you're bragging. Um, and then, how can we change, right? How can we change for the better? 
I'm a huge advocate of continuous improvement. Um, I would say that, that advocate for change is, is definitely one of my mottos. Um, but we all have those blind spots, right? I talked a little bit about what happened to me not too long ago uh, where I was told that I was being too bold, right? So we all have opportunities to change for the better. And then um, pulling out all the stops, right? Don't hide from the truth. Um, and then this last one, there is no ideal state. This this one may, may create some thoughts um, as well for the audience, but there really is no, there is no magic formula along your career, right? I, I shared with you some of the challenges that I have faced and um, you may be facing other challenges. So there really is no ideal state. Um, I, I will share, there's, there's a book, there's a book that I'm reading right now, um, and it's the. <laughs> this is this is a crazy title, um, the nine lies about work. So the, you know, I, I still I, I'm still reading it. I think I'm on line number six. Um, the verdict is still out in terms of how good this book is, but really it talks about this, right? It talks about there is no ideal state for every individual. Right. So, you know, in, in terms of wrapping up kind of the, the discussion that we're having here today, I talk about I talk about the tools, I talk about the strengths we need. Um, but really what what works for me not necessarily not is not necessarily going to work for you. So there is really no ideal state. You just have to see what what that is for you and um, build upon that. Right. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> okay. All right. So are you prepared for the disruption? So today, um, this ever so changing world that we're currently living living in, um, I anticipate that some are you some of you are are taking time to sort of um, think about what's next. Some of you may not know what's next in terms of your career or uh, what steps you're gonna take uh, with this ever-changing world that's changing by the minute um, with some of the current events. Um, again, I anticipate that all of you are safe and taking all of the precautionary measures that our, um, our nation has to take at this time. Um, but, but we are this we are this yellow fish, right? Kind of um, disrupting everything with the flow of of these other fish, right? That was that we were all kind of plugging away um, and and really um, need to take that time to reflect on, okay, what is my plan B? I, I will tell you, I'm definitely thinking about what is plan B and what is plan C please take an opportunity to kind of think about uh, what, what you're going to do next. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to startle anyone, right, with, with this discussion, but I think we have to be prepared. We have to be prepared in every, in every manner. And um, I, I definitely um, um, am here, um, and I am definitely somebody that, is willing to help anyone um, that wants to reach out. So the best, I didn't put my contact information, Dora, in the presentation, but I think it's it's something that, um, you know, you can reach out to me via LinkedIn um, and, and I am definitely here to support anyone that may have any further questions about some of the things that, that I've shared here and, and some of my journey along um, this climb that I, that I talk about this evening. So just a couple more things in terms of um, self-care um, that I, I saw this the other day and I, I wanted to share it with, with you all here. Um, you may have seen something, there's a lot of good information um, floating out there um, within, within our communities, but um, take time, you know, take time to do some of these. I, you know, the reason I really liked this slide is because they were like, 
quantifiable, right? You could put these little these little self care um, items into your into your daily daily life, right? Listen to your favorite song. I know I know we have the music blaring um, here at different times of the day. Um, the journal I talked about um, starting this gratitude journal. I started. Um, I can't believe it had been over a year since I had put something in here. So definitely that. Um, take a walk. Get crafty. Um, I think I shared earlier that I'm doing a lot of cooking. So, you know, take that time to to really um, enjoy, enjoy this this semi downtime, if you will. OK, how are we doing with time? Um, I think we've got like 10 minutes. Um, yeah. Um, so just a couple of other things here um, that resonate with me. So this is my favorite, favorite favorite of all time quotes. Um, and this one is uh, by Thomas Edison. And our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I think it's very important to understand that there will be adversity along the journey. Um, I have experienced to myself, um, but you just got to keep moving forward. Um, there's going to be times where, you know, there were times, I'll be honest, there were times that I thought, oh my goodness, I cannot take one more day. <laughs> there's no, there's no way that I can continue to be an engineer. I think, I think I want to be something else, you know? <laughs> and, um, you know, I just, I just kept going. There's like this internal drive in me to, to continue to succeed and, and really be that role model for others. Um, along the way. So as I mentioned earlier, people, people energize me. So the more people that contact me, the more happy you'll make me. So I'll, 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 I'll look forward to some of the, the people to, you know, that can reach out um, after this call. Um, here's, some, here's another interesting quote that I saw not too long ago. Um, the beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you. So Learning is a lifelong process, and once you have it, no one can take it from you. So just, just make sure, um, you know, to give yourself a pat on the back. Many of you are, are students today um, that are on this call, and you're on a, a, a challenging journey. Um, I, I, know, I know that engineering is, is definitely a tough field. For the Latinas out there, I know, I know that you're the minority, a double minority. So, you know, give yourself a pat on the back and, and know that that this is yours, right? And and nobody can take that from you. So my hat's off to all, all of the folks that are on the call. And then, yeah, I mean, in summary, Dora, what, you know, did we get any additional, did we get any additional questions? We've got a lot of here. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Yes, um, but before we get started, I do see um, a few famous people here in the chat room. So I want to give a shout out to our presenter from last month, Gino Jaramillo. Thank you for joining us. And to Dora Abreu, one of our most um, famous lifetime members here. But the first question. Hello. <laughs> the first question comes from Ilan Diaz. And he's asking, how did you position yourself to be considered for that um, expat assignment in Mexico? And how did you handle the repatriation back into the US? Awesome, excellent question. So there's a story behind that. Um, honestly, they approached me. Um, I was actually working on the Mexico um, assignment uh, prior to going to Mexico. So I was doing some work uh, back and forth, some traveling back and forth. And uh, when my director at the time approached me about going to Mexico, my first response to him was no. Um, so so I said, no, no, I'm not going. I said, my husband has a, um, a small business here. We, we, we can't do it. And they looked at me. I mean, their mouth dropped to the ground. They said, what? You're telling us no? I said, yeah, I'm telling you no. 
<laughs> so I guess I had a little bit of that boldness in me. Um, so I went home and I talked to my husband and my husband's like, why did you say no? We'll figure it out. So here I am so concerned about him and he is willing, right, to risk his small business, you know, sell off his, his portion of the business and take this risk with me. So, you know, lo and behold, I go back and, you know, I knock on that, on that director's um, door and I said, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. He's like, okay, great. We're really excited. <laughs> so um, that's really how, how, how I landed that, that role. And coming back um, from Mexico, it was pretty exciting. I got promoted. So um, it, it was definitely worth, worth the risk. Um, so I'm glad, I'm glad I took that risk. Okay, so our next question comes from Nicole Buenavida. Big shout out to her. So she's asking, sometimes we take risks. We get out of our comfort zone. For example, when we're applying for an internship, we select a not very convenient location for us, or we choose a position that we don't really like and we keep getting rejected or um, not answers from the companies. So, I don't really see a question here, but do you, can you relate to that or, you know, help our, our members that are thinking about internships? Yeah, I, w I would say, um, I'll, I'll put on my corporate hat there for a minute. So, um, the hiring process within, within our companies have gotten significantly better. So, I'm not sure if maybe, there's something that you're not highlighting on your resume and it's maybe getting, um, you know, overlooked. Um, so make, make sure um, that, that the resume highlights something specific to you. Um, and then I'll, I'll be honest, recently um, I had a conversation with a VP of another company and I asked her the question, do cover letters still exist, right? And she says, depends on who you ask. Um, I'm a huge advocate of cover letters still. Um, so, you know, if there's something that you can't really express in your resume, maybe you can put it in the cover letter. You know, it sounds like you're you're getting rejected and maybe there's a couple of things um, that you're not highlighting. So um, definitely, definitely um, think about that option. Okay, our next question comes from Evelyn. Valerio, and she's asking, can you identify what specific skills have helped you with your career breakthroughs? Yeah, um, I would definitely say um, interpersonal skills. Um, I, you know, the technical skills are definitely important, um, but it all depends in what um, area you are within within engineering right so say if i'm in research development there might be a specific skill that i need um, but i would say for me personally it's been building the, those relationships um, within different um, organizations and teams that i've been on have been very successful for me um, so you know again it all it all depends on what type of career you're looking to have All right, and this one goes out. This question's from Jennifer de Avila. What advice would you give to a Latina toddler mother in undergrad in engineering? Can you repeat that? What advice would you give to a one of our Shiptinas who is the mother of a toddler, but she's also in school in undergrad studying engineering? I would say um, definitely be creative, right? Um, and back to that tribe, is there anyone in your tribe that will help you um, with with your toddler, right? Um, sometimes we, we feel we have to go alone. I, I, I hope this is kind of, you know, the question that you're asking um, to me specifically as a mom. I'll, again, I'll give you a great, a great example. 
in the in the summer of 2006 i believe it was the summer of 2006 i can't believe i'm dating myself here my daughter was ivana was four and i had to take her out of state my husband had to stay back i had to take her with me on an on a six-week assignment so i hired a nanny and the nanny and my daughter would stay in the hotel while mommy went to work at one of the assembly plants. So definitely, definitely reach out to your tribe. They are willing to help. Um, you know, and if, if you wanna have any more discussion specifically, um, please feel free to reach out. Uh, again, LinkedIn is probably the best way um, to reach out to me, but un aplauso para ti. I mean, oh wow, congratulations um, on, raising a family and uh, pursuing a STEM degree. So very proud of you, yay. Okay, so Diana, how how are you spelling or how what is your full name in LinkedIn? Is it just Diana Ortega or is there a middle initial? There, I believe there's a middle initial. Um, let me pull it up here real quick. All right, and so while you're pulling it up, what is, um, I want you to, I wanna end the show with a most important takeaway that you can give to our listeners today? Oh, goodness. Well, I would say it's all about the small wins, right? So not it's not always necessarily about that big promotion or about a huge raise. It's really about small wins at the end of the day that make up those larger wins. I mean, the fact that I got this national award, oh my goodness, was like a culmination of all these small wins that I have had throughout my career. I mean, many of them huge, right? Um, but I would say it's very important to start documenting today, today, if you can, all of your successes on a weekly basis, right? Um, so I think it's very important to really make sure that you're taking credit when credit's deserved. Okay, so I thank you, Dora Abadeo, for sending it. I'm putting it in the chat box here and sending it out to the entire audience. So you have her connection there. All right. Well, Chef Familia, please join me in thanking Miss Diana Ortega. Bravo. Thank you so much for giving all these wonderful tips and strategies to our members. So we hope to see you all April 29th for a financial literacy just for you session as we listen to William Gonzalez from Rockwell Automation and Eileen Tapia from Accenture. Come here, their tips and strategies to plan for future financial security. So we're going to be having a virtual career fair Latinx Factor webinar to uh, on April 8th. So that will that webinar is going to prep you for the actual virtual fair, virtual career fair on April 18th. So we know it's not easy being a job seeker during these um, times of social distancing. That's why we're delighted to offer a virtual career fair option for our professional and student members on Saturday, April 8th from 11 to 3 Central Time. So the registration links will go out. Um, they went out today at, to RLDC 1, 2, 6, and 7 registrants and March 26th to all of our members. So Ship Familia, please remember to take our survey. You will receive a thank you email with a survey link right after this webinar. We need your feedback to make the program the best it can be. And the last reminder that this recording along with our other um, webinars can be found at ship.org under the programs tab. So signing off from Ship, um, from ship National Buenas noches, Ship Familia. Thank you. Good night. Stay safe.